My God, don't change that dial. <laughs> I've got with me Jorge George, powerful witness from San Diego, California. Listen, you have tuned in to a live broadcast. And that means that at the end of this thing, we're going to be praying for you live. And even when you watch it on the replay, the anointing of God is going to come through the cross TV airwaves like it did with me, George, when yes. I was five years old. I told this story today at the LA Dream Center. I was five years old, I had a crippled leg, and I walked with a limp like this, and I spent a year in the Children's Hospital and the Queen of Angels in Los Angeles, and a man named Oral Roberts was on a Christian television, just like you're watching on your device, on YouTube, on TV, wherever you're watching from. A man said, in the name of Jesus, and he prayed, for people to be healed. As a five-year-old boy, the power of God came through the airwaves on a replay. It wasn't even alive like you're watching. And my leg grew back two inches and God put a brand new hip socket in my leg. So don't change that dial. And if you can, let somebody know there's a live broadcast. These wild people are gonna pray <laughs> and they love Jesus. And George, yes. introduce yourself. This is pwministries.net. Correct. PW Ministries. So you can check them out real quick. I have known George for over 35 years, and he drove a long way <laughs> to be on this broadcast today. So, George, high five, my brother. Amen, good my brother. To see you. Amen. It's good to be here. Yes. Bill. Yes. Yeah. It's always been a pleasure to work with you, your brother Ken, Soldiers for Jesus. We're in the San Diego area. I love San Diego. And we have done ministry there since the 70s. I got saved in the tail end of the Jesus movement. But I didn't get saved. I got radically saved. Oh, come on. I got, I got That's so the difference. turned on as a Catholic. Yeah. Got yeah. so turned on to Jesus. And literally in a Catholic church, dropped to my knees and said, Jesus mm. changed my life. Mm. I was in a radical mm. uh, spiral downward path to destruction Jesus. in and out of jail overdosed on drugs drugs and alcohol were a big part of my life i had a beautiful panhead harley davidson motorcycle oh. it was one party after the next oh. and someone had the guts to tell me that i needed more than just a religion i needed a relationship with jesus yeah. and when i understood and he showed me my sin in scripture i dropped to my knees in a catholic church and said jesus if this is real I want it. In a Catholic church. In a Catholic church. Yeah. And that was in November 1976 and started uh, attending Bible college. And by 79, I was on the streets in San Diego County leading people to Jesus. And it seemed like every time I went out, someone got saved. Every single time I hit the beach, someone got saved and started opening up a, uh, I started an outreach center downtown San Diego, right on Broadway, and we started ministering to the lost in uh, January of 1979. And it's wow. been an amazing journey since wow. then, Bill. Wow. And again, you're watching the Cross TV. Let Dr. Joseph know that you appreciate the labor here, the labor of love, that they come together to get these live testimonials out on the airwaves. Minutes ago with George, we were having a bite of food. Right. And you started the conversation with our waiter. And, of course, you speak Spanish. Correct. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. You're a soldado para Jesucristo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But you were able to talk to him a little bit in, in Spanish. Yeah. And we shared a simple gospel with him. That's right. And I like what you said. It's not about a church. That's right. It's not about a religion. That's it's right. about a relationship. That's right with Jesus That's Christ. Right. Right. And I want to speak to you real quick. You know, you're watching right now, and I just wonder, could that be you? How many people are watching right now? Why do I ask this question? Because it was me. I grew up in church, George. Right. Right. Wow. I was baptized eight or nine times. Right. I sold Bibles. I knocked on doors. I did everything that a guy could do growing up in a church. Mm. And in my head, I thought I was OK. And in 1978, on a drug overdose, smoking wow. angel dust, wow. I fell over dead, heart stopped, came out of my body, and I cried out to Jesus, save me and I'll serve you. I went back in my body, stood up sober and coherent. Mm -hmm. 
A couple of days later, my brother Ken and my brother Jim come knocking on the door, and we all started talking about God, and we started slinging snot and started playing. In those days, we didn't have Christian music, so we played Hotel California <laughs> and climbing a stairway to heaven. And a bunch of, and we just felt, we thought we felt the anointing of God. Oh. I remember I called my sister, and I said, Sis, dear God, we just gave her life to Jesus. She hung the phone up in my ear. Fifteen minutes later, came to our front door right. and looked us in the mm -hmm. eye, and she said, Yes, it's real. She could tell the difference wow. in our eye. But tell the audience what you, the, you want them to know about Powerful Witness Ministries. The... Um we started ministering throughout San Diego. I actually had a television ministry back then. I was ministering the evangelism. It was a, a, a passion for me. Uh, twice a week, radio ministry. Started writing for a Christian newspaper, San Diego County. Powerful Wolf, Witness. I read that. Witness yeah, ministries. the good news, Yes, right? good news, yeah. etc. I, I worked on it for 20 years. But in the 90s, I actually came out with my first book on, on evangelism. It's, it's just got a ton of information on evangelism, breaking the frustrations of evangelism. But and where the, can they get this book now? They can, on your they website? Can contact, yeah, they can contact my email address, uh, PW Ministries or Powerful Witness Ministries at Hotmail.com. Powerful W? Per, pa powerful Witness Ministries out. at Hotmail.com. <clears throat> get a hold of me and I'll be glad to get to a copy to you. Man, that's one. You've got a number of books here. Look I have you, a number man. of books here, but the <clears throat> a passion hit me uh, this is a book on discipleship. In the 90s, the Lord started dealing with me about discipleship because there were too many people that were out there just praying a prayer and not following up. To me, follow-up has always been a key to really make sure they get planted in a good church. And so in the 90s, I started writing on discipleship, and I've come up with two manuals, one I have in many different languages. And uh, Wow, start, like how many languages? Uh, I have Romanian, I have Spanish, I have Swahili, English. Now it's being translated in Nigerian Teev. Wow. I just got back from uh, Uganda. I was going to say you're doing a lot of international travel. Now. A lot of international travel. We distributed 600 manuals in Uganda in three different cities. Can people, if they're watching, they want to go, could, could they go with you if they contact you? Absolutely. You? Anytime look. we tap in, I'm looking at Nigeria right now in the next few months because my material has been translated in Nigerian Teev. But if you're interested in, in traveling, you've never taken a mission trip, or maybe you have, love to have you tap in with me and go. We do, what I, what I do is I go and I train leaders. I train pastors and bishops and lay leaders in the churches to disciple. I teach them how to capture the people. Mm. I, I was in South Africa two years ago. We had 200 pastors there, and 15 pastors came from Zimbabwe. And it was interesting, after I finished teaching one of the sessions on discipleship, one of the pastors from Zimbabwe comes up to me. And he says, brother, we do evangelism in Zimbabwe, but if the people that got saved were captured in our churches, mm. all our churches would be full. Mm. What you've been teaching us will help us, help us to capture those people. Wow. I got the same thing in Kenya. They do evangelism, but they don't know how to really go after people and capture them for the kingdom and keep them. The, the key here, like Jesus said in John 15, 16, I, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you that you should go and bear forth fruit and that your fruit will remain. Oh, oh, yes. It, it's all about that remaining. Yeah. And, and not just remaining, but dwelling. See, the key to understanding this is people don't have the habit of going to church, reading the Bible. So we pray a prayer with them, but we do nothing to go after them. So I teach people how to be good disciplers and how to go after people and make sure they get planted in the body of Christ or in your church. And that's what God's been using me in in many different countries. Last year, we were in Tanzania. We had over 500 pastors, 1,200 leaders, right above Arusha. And uh, we distributed... Um, a thousand of my discipleship manuals in Swahili and 200 in English. My. So God has just been opening doors, wow. especially in Africa. I've been to many countries in South America, Mexico, I speak Spanish fluently, Central America, but there's been such a passion for the African people. Mm. And God has just opened amazing wow. doors in so many countries in Africa. Now on your website, you have videos that people can watch? Yes. Yes. And so that website again? Is uh, pwministries.net. pwministries.net. Again, you're watching. This is a live broadcast in just a few moments. We have a live audience here. We got a couple other generals here that's in, in the, about to come on the broadcast. But listen, we want to pray for you. 
Today, at the Dream Center, there were so many people that were filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I grew up Baptist, mm. and a lot of people grew up in denominational churches, and they don't know about the power. You've got to receive the power That's right. of the Holy Ghost. Acts 19, Paul was traveling up the upper coast, 1 through 7. He found, 20 years after the day of Pentecost, right. he found 12 disciples. His first one and only question, do you have the Holy Ghost? That's right. So, George and I are asking you, the live audience, That's right. do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you have the Spirit? Do you have a prayer language? Can you communicate with the Creator supernaturally? If not, stay tuned. We're going to pray for you in just a few minutes. Dial that number on your screen. I see that there's a number up there. Or email them and let Dr. Joseph know that you love what's going on here. And, and what else does your ministry offer? I mean, this is powerful. Powerful Witness. Powerful Witness Ministries. Well, we do just a lot of training, but we do counseling, and especially I have... And are a, you available in the Southern California area? Absolutely. Would you? Would you? Okay, especially absolutely. Southern Cal, because you live in San Diego. I live in San Diego, yeah. so I'm able to travel wherever there's an open door and go and just train people. You know, one of the things that I believe in as far as, it, as, far as evangelism goes is God brings people across your path everywhere you go, just like the gentleman in the restaurant earlier. Who did pray with who us. Did, we did pray with him. Yes, absolutely. I, it was interesting. I'm flying from Chicago to Brussels, Belgium, three weeks ago. I hear my name called. I'm seated, seated in 47A in the back of the plane. I hear my name called. I go up front. They said, sir, we need your seat. I said, okay. So they gave my seat to somebody else, and they placed me in first class next to this one lady that I ended up spending the rest of the trip ministering the gospel to. Suffering for Jesus. It, it clicked. Oh it clicked <laughs> thinking. There's a reason why out of hundreds of people, yeah. they picked me to go sit next to this lady and minister to her. See, if you're open and obedient to open your mouth to say something, when God connects you with someone, you will always, everywhere you go, bear fruit. I believe that. This precious guy that you and I just talked to yeah. and, and Brother Janetto, we asked him and said, hey, are you going to heaven? If you died now, would you go north or south? And he looked, would you go to heaven or hell? And he goes, oh, heaven. And I go, how do you know? Yes, absolutely. And then he goes, well, oh, I want I, to go. I, I, <laughs> said, want to. I want to go. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, okay, then we got to do what Jesus said. He That's said, right. you must That's be right. born again. That's right. He told Nicodemus, you can't see and you cannot enter unless you're born again. You're watching the Cross TV. This is a live broadcast. And, and on the Facebook, you should type in some prayer requests. And if we don't do it live on the broadcast, we'll do it later on. But, yes, yeah, so what else? Come, keep talking to us, man. Well... If you I, I, go I, I, into churches, what is your forte? Well, if they, if they want evangelism, I will teach them how to connect with people wherever they go. How to, how to look for those people that God is pointing out or what many times we call highlighting. Many times we, we see someone, God points them out to you, God highlights yeah, them, and you connect it. But you have to be obedient to approach them and minister to them and make the connection. Yeah. And then from that point forward, you do your best to follow up and help them. Keep this in mind, uh, Bill. The devil cannot stop you from getting saved. But what he does, if that was true, all, none of us would be saved. But what he does is keep you from get, try to keep you from getting established in the oh, faith. Oh, and getting the power. And getting the power, Come absolutely. On. Come on. Absolutely. So this is what happens everywhere when we're not open to disciple or mentor or go after someone to make sure they get planted because they just don't have that habit to tap in. What we do is we thank them for praying and prayer. We thank them for making that commitment to the Lord, and we do nothing to go after them. So I will teach people how to be good disciplers. And then, you know, whatever the pastor is, many times I just bring the Word of God. I love, I'm a student of the Word. I love the Word of God. I love yeah. going into the Word of God. We had 17 days in Uganda uh, these last uh, three weeks that... Uh, I was watching some of the videos on your you? website. Yeah. They're good, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. So it was, it was a blessing. I mean, the people were so hungry and so open. And that's one thing about Africa that I appreciate, and you know this because we were talking about it earlier, is you go to Africa and you have, you have something to give and they're going to draw from oh, you. Oh, oh, 
They're oh. going to draw from you There's from no early morning. There's no 20 morning services over there. No, early morning uh -huh. till late at night. Last year, last year in uh, Kenya, we had just doing, we finished doing a conference in Tanzania. 1,200 leaders flew to Kenya, started doing open-air meetings in Nairobi and north of Nairobi in a place called Embu. And what happened, people were getting saved, people were getting healed, but then we noticed, we almost got into a head-on collision. The bishop that was driving the vehicle I was in almost went over a cliff. Ooh. I mean, there were several things that happened. Yeah. Then that night, there was a big black snake that went into the church, bit a lady, they rushed her to the hospital, she survived. That night, the place I was staying at, the, the, the water tank just exploded. Mm. We knew we were under spiritual attack. Mm. So mm. we found out the next day that the witch doctors had walked the grounds before we got there oh to curse the area. Right. When we got there, started right. ministering, I contacted churches here in America, asked for prayer support. That night, the lady that was bringing the, the witchcraft material mm. was exposed. She gave her heart to Christ, and we had a little bonfire, burned all the witchcraft material, and uh, we had amazing breakthrough after that. Yes. We had people that were paralyzed, healed. Come we had on. people that were uh, uh, a lot of pain disappeared. We had a pastor's son that had gotten into a motorcycle accident, could not walk, went up to him, held him. I said, get up prayed for him, started walking around with him. In about a half hour, I turned him loose. He was walking on his own. Next right. day, he was back to normal. So wow. just amazing things wow. happened. But the, 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 the great thing about it is we ended up with 66 people from that four-day crusade. It wasn't thousands that showed up. The people of the town that came, we ended up with 66 that got planted mm. in the, the churches there in Embu, yeah. Kenya. To me, that's, that's great. That's fruit that yeah. remained yeah. within the churches and got planted and growing in their faith. Yes. And that's what, that's what I try to do is try to teach the, the leaders on to teach their congregations to keep them that God gives them. Wow, wow. You know, statistics show, now this is a 30-minute broadcast. Right. If this was one hour, there would be almost 7,000 people go into eternity. Wow. Out of that 7,000, only 5% max mm. are going this way. And this is why it's so important that we don't just go to church and get all we can and can what we get. We've got to share our stories That's right. with people. If you're just tuning in, if you're just watching the replay, this is the Cross Television Show with Dr. Joseph. There's a number on your screen. There's an email. Please let them know that you watched and where you're watching from. And in a moment, we're going to pray. And whether it's live right now, and it is, or if you're watching the replay, that same anointing. That's right. Like I told my story earlier, when I was five, Oral Roberts, a replay. I touched the television, and a leg that was crippled grew back two inches. God put a hip socket in there. So in seven minutes or less, we're going to pray. So let somebody know. And uh, come on, where are we going with this? We yeah. are, you're still up to bat. Amen. I, st I just want to say to every, every individual that's watching from around the world, wherever you're mm. at, you know, the first thing, the first mandated uh, command that God gave to you and to me, what we call the Great Commission. Okay, keep in mind, in, in Mark's Gospel, he said, go preach the gospel, Jesus said. But in Matthew's gospel, he said, go make disciples. Yep. That is the Great Commission. Yep. It has to be both. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage you, since I left Uganda just a few days ago, I, I got a report from the church I was ministering in, and the people are out evangelizing. People are getting saved. There were many Man. people that got saved on their own. Without mm. me being there, I taught them what to do and, you know, ministered to them. They grasped it, and they started taking the gospel outside the four walls. So I just want to encourage you to take what God has given to you. You know, one of the greatest things that you can do, like my brother Bill said, is share your story. Yes. Share your testimony. Yes. Share what God has done in your life. You know, like I, I do that almost 100% of the time when I'm connected with somebody because I want them to know what God did in my life. That opens the door for yes. them to be able to hear more. Yes. So then I start ministering to them. 
Share your testimony. But at the same time, don't stop right there. At least do whatever you can to get their information mm. so that you can follow up and guide and direct them and get them planted in your church. That's fruit. That's fruit that remains. Interesting, in the Greek wording there, remain is mino. But the word endurance, Matthew 24, 13, is hupomino. Ooh. It means to dwell under, to remain under. Oh, come on, come and on. And that's something that we yes. want people to do. It's a realm of enduring Stay and staying connected. underneath the protection and, and the love of, of, of God in Christ. So I encourage mm. you, just before we, we, we go off the air, yes. you know, have that heart. If there's anything I can do to be of help to you, if I can provide material for you, whether it's discipleship or evangelism, there's a couple of books that I have, I have authored uh, that I'll be able to put into your hands. But if, if what's, the name, I can what's be, the name of them? This one's called Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. You know, this I sat in a hotel room in Ontario, California, in 2008, and my daughter had just given me a laptop, and I walked into my, my hotel room because I was working up in this area in Laverne, California, and I said, God, what do you want me to do with this laptop? He said, I want you to start writing. Mm. I put the laptop on my lap, and I said, what do you want me to write? And within nine months, I had this book written wow. and published. Wow. And then shortly after that, I started writing Faithful and Free, Keys to Living with Passion. Wow. This is an autobiography of what God has done in my life in the last 43 years mm. that has kept me on fire, full of passion, mm. growing and, and producing fruit for the kingdom of God, I tell the story in here. Wow. So if I can be of help to you, just get a hold of me, PW That website Ministries, again, tell them your website. PWMinistries.net. P, P is in Paul, W is in William, PWMinistries.net. Yes. And then they can contact you, they can get the books. They can contact and, me, uh, they can get the books. There's somewhere in the Southern California area. Yes. You could actually go yeah. there live. E even, even if you're across the world, mm. I've done this many times, you have an email address, I can send you my discipleship material, my evangelism material on a PDF file mm. to your computer where you have the information. I've done this many times to where people, I, I, they don't get the books, but they can get email. And mm. I'll send you that info. I won't charge you anything. I will send you the information if you'll use it to benefit the kingdom. And now it's time. We're going to pray for you right now. If you're watching by Facebook, please share. Share because you care and get this good news out there. Yes. All right, we take dominion and authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We break the power of Jezebel and witchcraft, iniquities, bloodline curses, stinking thinking, everything that has attached itself to you that does not belong, we break its power. Yes. From the cross television show, live, even on the replay, we ask the Lord, and he's doing it now, releasing the anointing of Almighty God. If you don't know Jesus or you need to dedicate, you simply say, Jesus, whatever you do, do it for me. If you need to be healed, ask for that right now. Whatever your situation is, ask, and it shall be given to you. Okay. Seek, and you will find. If you knock, it shall be opened. Share if you're watching. Make sure to let somebody know and watch this broadcast. And George, what's on your heart to pray for the people too? I just want to pray that God bears tremendous, amazing fruit in your life. Jesus, yes. And that your fruit will remain. But I pray that God will give you clarity of mind, that you will hear clearly what God is saying to you, that you would fulfill the purposes and the design of what, why you're on the earth. And what does God have for you? Go after it with all your heart, and God will fulfill those desires that he has for you. Second Timothy, in chapter 4, says, Preach, rebuke, reprove, exhort, and do the work of the evangelist. Amen. Do the work of the soul winner. Amen. If you do that, it fulfills your ministry. And everybody wants to be fulfilled. That's right. Okay, you didn't watch this by accident. Please share the broadcast. Contact that number, email the Cross TV, and let them know that Jesus is Lord. Let them know where you're watching from. Let them know you prayed. And don't type in there. If you're watching by Facebook, just type in there some more prayer requests that we'll see after this broadcast. Any final thoughts, my brother? just want to say I love you. 
And uh, I pray one day I'll be able to just visit you and spend time with you in your country in Jesus' name. Yes, even if it's the USA. <laughs> so may, <laughs> may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you today and give you his peace, his presence, his provision, his power, and his protection. But most of all, wouldn't you say his presence? Amen. Because in his presence, there's peace. Fullness in his joy. presence, there's joy, fullness, fullness of, of joy. joy. That's right. And my God, my God, where there's two or three gathered like we are right now, there he is in the midst. So share this broadcast. Let people know. And uh, contact Across TV. Find out when it's going to air again so other people can watch this. Let us know where you're watching from. Dr. Joseph, Cross Television, Southern California, coming to you via live, the Holy Ghost satellite, all the way across the world into your, where are they at? They're in their living room, their bedroom. They're watching by, who knows where you're watching from, but you're watching the right place at the right time. That's right. One final declaration, brother. In Jesus' name, Lord God, do what you want to do in these people here. We declare uh, fullness in your mm. life. Increase. First, uh, mm. uh, Psalms 115, verse 13 and 14. I claim that for you. Psalms 115, verse 13 and 14. I claim increase and blessing for you that are watching this program in Jesus' name. Yes, Romans 10, 13. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. His name is Jesus right. of Nazareth. And all God's people said, Amen. Come on, everybody, live Amen. audience. Hallelujah.